I'd like to invite the boys and girls who are with us this morning to join me. I'm glad to see you all this morning. I've missed seeing you the last couple of weeks. You having a good summer? You ready to go back to school? They're shaking their heads. Oh, I have one honest one over here. (laughs) Well, I want to show you something that I made back when I was in the seventh grade. That's a knick-knack shelf. And when I was in the seventh grade, all the girls had to take home ec, and all the guys had to take shop. I don't know if they still do that today or not, but I had a horrible time with shop. This just wasn't my thing. And I did make this knick-knack shelf, but it took me a whole half a year to make it. And I just don't do well making things like that. Now, I know, for example, that this is a hammer. And I know this is a wrench. I've never used one, but I know it's a wrench. And I, I'll, I'll talk to you after the service. And I actually know that this is a Phillips screwdriver. But using them and knowing what they are are two different things. And other people are so much better at doing things and making things like this. So I want to show you something that Mr. McLaughlin made. He's a member of our congregation. And he made this while I was away. I think I'll put it right here. And this beautiful bookcase, it's going to go over on the other side of the organ and all of the bell choir music is going to be stored up there. So everything will be nice and neat. I'll show you. He made this as well. This would have probably taken me about four or five years and it wouldn't have looked anything like this. And if you come up here, I'll show you something else he made. Come on up. We have two choirs up here. We have our chancel choir and we have our bell choir. And it was always hard because they were sharing the same space. So he made sort of a drop leaf table. Look what happens. Lift it up and they can put their bell music and their bells on there. Isn't that pretty cool? Yep, and then it goes down. We can go back down. So he is very talented. And, you know, I get to thinking about that. And it isn't that you have to have talent to build. Sometimes the most important thing is to have a willing heart. And that's why, for a number of years, I went with the high school youth on our Habitat for Humanity trips. Because I wasn't very good at building, but there were others who did know how to build, and they would help me, and they would show me what to do, and they would work with me. And God has given us all tools, maybe not these kind of tools, but the ability to work with them. And other tools are singing, and maybe painting, and our minds are tools. All the things that we can do are tools that God has given us. And God wants us to use those tools, those things that God has given us to make the world a better place and to help those who aren't as fortunate as we are. And Habitat for Humanity has been building homes for people who have no place to live, oh, probably now for about 40 years. And we've been going on Habitat for Humanity mission trips for about 13 years. And you can see all the work that we're doing. And I think I'm in this picture up here, and we're getting ready to put shingles on the roof of a house. And so this morning, as we think about Loving the least among us, we are thinking about using tools to help those who have no place to live through Habitat for Humanity. And when you go up to Fellowship Hall, you are going to be able to put these little bird houses together and paint them. And you can take them home, and there's a place to hang them. And you can put them outside on a 
tree limb, and it'll provide a home maybe for a bird for you to come and see from time to time. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for all the things that we can do for our minds and our hands that can bake and build the things for our ability to sing, whatever the tools are that you have given us. Help us to use them so that we can bring more of Jesus' love into this world. Amen. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you.